Welcome or welcome back to Lift You Up Inspiring Health Stories. I'm your host, Tamika Bickham. I'm the founder and chief storyteller of TB Media Group. But for the purpose of this podcast, I am your health and happiness matchmaker. Now, before I introduce you to today's guest, you know what I'm going to ask you to do if you haven't already. Hit subscribe on YouTube, turn on notifications, and connect with me on LinkedIn because I'd love to stay connected with you. Now, today we're kicking off Black History Month, and I'm interviewing a guest I actually haven't met before, but he's a cane. Y'all know I love my canes. Demetrius Jackson, a South Florida standout athlete, defensive end for the University of Miami Hurricanes football team. But he grew up right here in South Florida in Overtown in the inner cities and continued to make community giving back so much a part of who he is starting a turkey drive while he was in college and then continuing on and developing that give back nature into his own nonprofit where he mentors young men how to prepare for college and for their lives his nonprofit is men of today he's talking about that and also why representation giving back especially to those communities who need it most is so important <laughs> Our physical, mental, and emotional health is not just a want, it is a need for happy lives and prosperous businesses. Lift You Up is the podcast where we share inspiring health stories from business owners who are fulfilling their purpose to live their healthiest lives and helping you do the same. From former TV reporter to marketing entrepreneur and content creator, I care about sharing stories that matter and stories that connect us. I'm your host, Tamika Bickham, your health and wellness matchmaker. All right, well, today I'm so excited to meet virtually, even though we're not that far away in location <laughs> proximity. <laughs> we're both local to South Florida. Demetrius Jackson, who you will learn much more about in just a minute. Hi, Demetrius. How you doing? How you doing, Tamika? <laughs> you know, I always have to give a shout out because I'm a cane and I love my canes. <laughs> What I love having my canes on this show. I got you. I got you. I mean, yes, I yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you can't. I, I mean, I hate to admit you came a few years after me, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, still bleed orange and green. So happy to have you. I know you. Um, you know, we're a football player at UM. You have your own nonprofit now. I believe you are a football coach over at, tell me, which high school? Um, I was at, I was the former. So I, I was an assistant coach at Booker T. Then I went to American Senior High as the head coach. Now I'm back at Booger T. I'm not teaching this year. I mean, I'm coaching this year. So, but let's see, you know, let, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay. Okay. So football still certainly in your life. Um, but I know you are also somebody who has an entrepreneurial spirit, a give back mm -hmm. spirit, um, certainly very involved in the community. You also ran for office. Yes. Of 2019 to 2020, I actually ran for state representative, but I stopped, you know, because I got the head football coaching job at American. I didn't want to juggle too much. Um, my first time being a head coach, first time running for office. So I say, you know, let me just, you know, put the running for office down right now because I think I can affect, you know, more people, especially young people through the game of football, you know? I'm interested in learning about your path up until now because I certainly want to learn more about your work in the communities in South Florida, <laughs> which is where you were born and raised and grew up. Right? Yes, yes, the community of Overtown. My mother, my godfather, my uncles, you know, aunts. Um, older people underneath the tree, you know, these is a strong village that got me to this point where I'm at right now. Awesome. And um, I, I was listening to your cane talk, which I want to make sure we also link <laughs> to below because you did a really great job um, Thank you. with that. That um, interestingly enough, you grew up in Overtown, but you only played one year of football in high school before... Yes before then being i think heavily, you know heavily recruited at that point so so tell me about that what sparked the interest in even starting to play football i have i have a cousin who played for Harlem globe charters i have an uncle 
fought for the heavyweight championship of the world, fought Lennox Lewis. Um, I come from a, a background full of football players, you know, basketball players. And through my whole year of uh, my whole years of high school, I thought basketball was was my thing. I thought that's what I was about to um, go to college for. But um, Coach Tim Ice Harris, you know, the head coach right now, Florida Memorial University, he was my head coach at Booger T. Washington Senior High School. And all the coaches were trying to get me to play. And Coach, what really got me, I was sitting next to a senior. He was my teammate. He was a senior. I was a junior on a basketball team. And it was the last day of spring, the last day to pay your insurance to start spring football. Coach Ice walked up to him and said, son, what college are you going to? He couldn't answer him. He said, how long have you been playing basketball? The kid said, my whole life. And Coach Ice said, man, he said, if you, he said, if you just give me 30 days, he said, I promise you I'll change your life. I will help change your life. He said, I will pay this $23 for you. And, you know, um, ever since then, I didn't look back. You know, I always could play the game. It's not, it's, you know, it's, I always could play the game. Um, I just didn't want to. I thought basketball was my passion. You know, it was my passion, but I thought it was my way, you know, out. But, you know, it, it turned out to be the game of football. So mm-hmm. since then, I just stepped on the field and I didn't look back since. So your coach must have saw something in you when it came to football that you didn't necessarily see since you thought basketball was was really going to be your way. Of course. And the funny, the funny part about it, a lot of my family members before me who tried football, went to college, you know, they didn't quite finish it for whatever reason. They didn't quite finish their four years. Who would ever thought along came me, you know, had opportunity, you know, to go to the pros, you know, but like I say, after I got hurt, surgery, sideline, my feelings, you know, it started to change a little bit and, you know, graduated, finished all my four years, started at the University of Miami. And I'm like, man, look at this, this little guy, a little kid that came from the community of Overtown that did these things after, pl- after playing one year of football, you know. One year of football in high school, taking it back still a little bit. And what happened at that point where you, you started getting calls from different schools or was it really UM you had your your eye on? Did you know that you were going to be able to play college football in, 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 in at D1 in college? No, actually, UM was last on my list. I did not want to go to the University of Miami at all. Listen, Why I, was it just the it was it just the at home thing like you wanted to go someplace else? What was it? Honestly, you know, yes, and you know, I just I just didn't give thought to it. You know, I didn't. I, I really didn't. I wasn't stuck up on. I wasn't stuck on. Okay, I have to be a cane. I have to be a cane. I have to play for the hometown because my first day of spring ball, I got three offers from University of Arkansas. Randy Shannon was over there. FIU and Tennessee, University of Tennessee. And, you know, like I say, since then, I'm not, you know, I'm not being funny. Since then, like I said, I hate the, you know, even both to brag, but since then, when I mean it took off, it really took off. I became a four-star. Um, and the scary part about it, I only played one year. Imagine if I would have played since my freshman year. You know, I played with all these All-Americans. I beat some of these All-American O-linemen. And imagine if I just played two or three years, you know, I, I would have been all American myself, but my top two schools was the university of Texas and Arkansas. Um, what really drove the decision to go to university of Miami was my mother. You know, my mother was here. It was just my mother and my two brothers. And I'm looking at, okay, man, I'm from the inner city. I know how it is with these women trying to raise boys, especially boys by themselves. I said, let me stay here. You know, I have a presence especially in their lives. I said, let me stay here, help my mother with them. And, you know, like I said, that was, that was, I think that was the best decision, you know, that I, I could have made because I took myself out of the equation and, you know, I thought about my brothers because I was scared if I go off to college, I may get a call, hey, something happened to your brother, something happened, something happened. Now, we didn't have no transfer portal. So I would have had to come all the way back home, wherever I was at, probably transferred, and you know it was just a lot a lot of domino effect probably would have happened but i was just excited you know i was able to stay home um play with some great coaches at the university of miami build some great relationships great bonds some doors open for me so i you know i can't complain i'm just thankful 
it sounds like you've always kind of had that thinking of others um, kind of character um, that that's been a part of who you are from a young age. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I, like I said, my uh, my great aunt she instilled that in us. It rubbed off on me. Like I said, it's just a different era now. I was coming up, you know, in the era. Even though I'm not that old, I'm 20, 27, you know. But I know I don't carry myself like it. I, you may think I'm probably 30 or 40 from the way I talk <laughs> or carry myself. You're in college. You're playing football, and you said, uh, I, I know you had the. I think it was the the knee injury. Yes. Um. And I, I can't remember the exact words or how you phrased it. It was really good. So if you remember, tell me. But you said <laughs> you lost, you lost like kind of the will to continue to play football. Yes. Yes, I, I, I did. You know, I, I remember like it was yesterday, you know. And um, I remember I got hurt at Virginia Tech. I told my lateral meniscus. And, you know, what really hurt me is when Coach Kuligowski left. He left and took the job to go to Alabama. I got a new coach in again. You know, it is it is what it is. I got a new defensive line coach in. And, you know, when he came in, I thought things was going to roll just how it was with Coach Cool. But it didn't. And, hey, here I'm, I'm an older guy. I'm coming off this knee injury. This, You know, I'm not really 100%. You need about two years until you get back to yourself with this knee. And... I couldn't produce, so you get pushed to the side. It's a business, right? You know, it, it's the business of football. And it just seemed like no matter how hard I try and rehab and rehab and get trying to get myself back together, it wasn't on time. They tried, they wanted to do a medical red shirt. I told them no. I was gonna be 24 the following year. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not about to do this to myself, be with these younger guys. I can't do it. Let me just finish out, get my degree. I'm going to make what I could. And even, you know, I, I started playing a little bit in the year, and I said, okay, if, if I can get some more burn these next couple of games, get the feeling back, okay, I can get it. And I remember talking with Dan um, Dan Morgan, linebacker from University of Miami. I think he's the best linebacker to ever come through UM, number 44. Um, he, he's speaking with me because, you know, he's at Buffalo Bills as a, as a scout. He's speaking with me. Oh uh, man, why you need? He told, he tell me, man, why you not doing your pro day? Man, go go put your shorts on and do your pro day. Literally, he said, man, you know we have you high on our board. We still wanted you. But my thing was, was I playing the game for me at that point, or was I playing it just to try to push ahead, get a few bucks, you know, help out my mom, fulfill that promise, you know, trying to get get it at home like I said I was, and. I just could I just couldn't find the willpower and I knew it wasn't me. I knew it wasn't me. I knew it was God. So I just said, you know, it, 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 a different way, another way, another path is going to open up. Losing that will to continue. It sounds like though you have a great sense of self and for you, you knew what felt right and what didn't. Of course. Cuz a lot of people can get influenced by outside noise and voices kind of saying and, and make decision based on what other people think you should do. No, yes, and and that's what it was. That, that's exactly what it was too. I even had family members, man, you're making a bad mistake, mad at me because I didn't even want to play no more. And I had to tell them, wait, you know, were you really here for me? This is my decision. And I mean, family members really close to me. This is my decision. This is what I'm going to do. And I made that stance to show, you know, hey, I'm not this little boy anymore where I'm I'm doing this to please you. I'm doing, because I for, for a little period of time, you know, I used to do things to please people. And me making that stance separated myself from that. And family members saw that. Coming, you know, from South Florida, but especially in South Florida, it's a, it's a pot for football. Um, youth football, and that's what you see everybody's trying to do football and I keep telling these parents, you know, let's not just stress football. Let's stress education. You know how hard it is right now to make it to the pros. And I'm when I talk about making it to the pros, I'm talking about get on the active roster, stay on the active roster. Not bounce around every two or three months. Mm -hmm. Practice squad, practice squad, practice squad. So, you know, but yeah, that was part of it. That that, that was part of it. Mm-hmm. And ultimately from what we've been talking about, you have 
a variety of interests and and strengths. So you were <laughs> right. So you were majoring in political science. That's what you got your degree in. You were tell me about when you're you know giving back to the Thanksgiving meals. All that started was did that start while you were in college or was that after? I actually started in college. I told these people I was going to give them turkeys, right? We did over 100 turkeys, and I said, I, I, my knee is, I mean, I'm fresh out of surgery, fresh out. I mean, I can't even stand. I'm on crutches. Every time I walk from here to the door with the crutches, I'm hurting because I feel the mm. blood going to my, you know, going through my foot, that big rush of blood going to my foot from my knee. I'm like, okay, then. So all my teammates, Chad, my whole defensive line, basically, and my tight end, Chris Herndon, um, Mark Walton, running back, um, Lawrence Cage, a receiver, um, Carl Davis, a good friend of mine. Um, everybody bloated up in the truck in the U-Haul, and we went delivering them turkeys. And even we was out all day. You know, I, I my coaches got on me at the end of the day because it was even my training man. They were like, "Man, you shouldn't have been putting all this stress on your body." But I said, I try to be a man of my word. You know, I try to be a man of my word to people. And, you know, we did it the smart way. I had a lot of hands helping me out. So, like, I wasn't trying to do it on my own. And, yeah, we did it. You know, even though fresh out of surgery, I didn't know I was going to have surgery. I didn't know I was going to be hurt. I thought I was going to be completely healthy doing this turkey drive. And, hmm. you know, and what it just prompted, started. And in, what prompted you to, to organize a turkey drive? Where did that idea come from? I don't know, honestly. To be honest with you, I don't know. I just, you know, I, my thing is I just know, you know, you have a platform at UM. I know, especially as a student athlete, football player, that, you know, you, you whatever you do, I know people want to follow. You want to get attention for it. And I say, man, you know, let's let's try to share the spotlight on something, on something positive at UM. And did that. I, I said, let me think of something. I say the holidays are coming up. You have people that's hungry. And I say, you know, this is not about myself. It's not about my teammate. This is about the University of Miami as an organization, as a whole. A lot of people try to say, you know, I started that community service piece for UM, what people see now. But I say, no, I, um, Ms. Sherelle Jackson started that piece, who's there right now at the University of Miami. Because if it was no Ms. Sherelle Jackson, it wouldn't be, um, I wouldn't be the person I am today. You're going, she's the one that helps us. Okay, what are you going to do when football is over? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? You need options. Let me help you with your resume. Let me help you. Let me bring in these universities. I mean, not these universities, I'm sorry, but these careers, firefighter, FBI, Navy, Air Force, Army. Mm -hmm. Let me bring Coca-Cola. Let me bring in all these different career, 20, 30 people at a career career day. Put Send in your resume so you can have your job offer by the time you walk out of here. Mm-hmm. Fast forward to now, you are a nonprofit founder of Men of Today. Tell me about that journey. Um, tell me about Men of Today, what you do, and really why you started the organization. Um, and it's been a long journey, actually, with Men of Today. We started off as just kids when I was in high school. Then we went from just kids because we found out, man, these kids aren't kids anymore. They're young men. So we went from just kids to young men of tomorrow. You know, we, we weren't we weren't in a nonprofit. We just had our name with Sunbiz. We had all that, you know, established. And then I told myself, you know, probably a couple of months ago, I say these aren't young men of tomorrow. I'm tired of that phrase. Young men of tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Why can't they be men of today? Mm -hmm. Why can't? Why can't they be men of today, you know? And I always have this phrase, just because you're 19 and 20, I don't think that makes you a kid because of your age. You have 19 and 20 year olds out here paying bills, taking care of families. But you got men out here in their, in their 40s still acting like kids, childish. It's the <laughs> mindset, you know, it's the mindset. And from that, like I said, it's just been a journey from that. We just started going, you know, we're in the process of trying to get our own space. We provide college readiness for young boys for great grades all the way from one through 12. I don't think it's never too early to start talking about college or talking about um, uh, skill trades. I don't think that's never 
too early, you know, especially in our community, any community, but I'm, you know, I'm African American, so I can't relate to really anybody else except little African American boys. But our program, we have white, you know, little white boys, Spanish boys, we have all type of boys in our program. But, you know, we don't turn nobody away. We don't turn anyone away. We got guys in the Navy, we got guys in the Marines, guys in the Army. We got successful men, successful men. And I keep telling people success just doesn't look like, okay, if I'm on the field, NFL, no, success comes in all forms. Um, so yeah, you know, we just trying to do our part in the community. We just trying to do our part, still raising funds. And we got some some private donors I've been talking to, um, people that are gonna donate sixty, seventy thousand dollars So, you know, we're just in the process of trying to get this thing, get this thing going. So mainly you serve grades one through 12, but some are in college, but mainly preparing them for for college and for their futures for life you know it's a partnership for life and once you graduate once you get through this program again we're here we're here with you for life we're here with you for life but now it's your time to come and step up and do the and be what we were to you to these young people to these young people coming right behind you um we got a good staff good things and like i said we got people we got kids getting ready to do job interviews next month Mm -hmm. um yeah, we got them shirt and tie, teaching them how to tie ties, teaching them how to conduct themselves in interviews, teaching them how to keep themselves groomed. Because a lot of these boys don't have father figures in their lives. Mm-hmm. And that's, I tell I tell a lot of um, my, my um, the older guys, you know, especially kids need their fathers. You know, kids need their fathers. I don't care how you put it. Kids need their fathers. You know, my father, I had my godfather. My real father wasn't there. And I still saw, as I got older, I still saw little areas in my life that I lacked. Like, damn, you know, I was supposed to, my dad was supposed to teach me this. I wasn't supposed to have to learn this on the fly. Mm-hmm. And but, that, but that's the beautiful thing about life. You know, life is the greatest teacher, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. So, yeah. So you hope to be that, it really sounds like, through this nonprofit that you've created for, you know, some of these young men or, or boys that don't have that example that they need. Not only, you know, I'm sure some of them may have oh, yeah. fathers in their lives, but ultimately just like you said, getting them ready for life, for college. People who's in a program, some of them lost their lives, you know, to gun violence, senseless gun violence in the streets. And that just, that discouraged me a little bit. Cause I'm like, like, you know, damn, what are we, what are we teaching? What are we doing this for? And we have our kids getting getting snatched away from us. And that just drove me to even, you know, to, to go harder, to go harder. If we can, if I, we can save one life, we did our job. Hmm. We did, we, we, like I said, we did our job. Right. And um, so like I say, we, I'm just proud. I'm just really proud. I'm just trying to get, you know, we're trying to get this thing off the ground slowly but steady. And, okay. you know, we're, 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 we're going to do it. Like I said, we're, we're going to do it. I, I was focusing on getting my gym, but I put that aside to focus on this because I think this is a greater cause. I want to get this situated first. I believe when you tell people your values and communicate that, you can always find people where values are aligned. And at least if you all are on the same ship headed in the same direction and at the core believe in the same things, that tends to be a good match. Oh, you're you're you're, ab- you're absolutely right, and that's something I shared with my my kids the other day. Um, I listen, you know, every morning, I, um, I listen to um one of my favorite um pastors, um, on Facebook, and they had a live her and her husband, and she they were saying hoping and wishing won't get you there, and I told them, and I said you need a plan. I say hoping and wishing ain't gonna get you to your dream. Get you a plan, write your plan out, even if. In that plan, you know, you're going to have setbacks and stuff like that. But have you a plan? Okay, I want to go to college. I want to go to college. You know, um, it may it may take you time to get there. But okay, you got the college. Now what's the next step? So just have a plan. And, you know, you're absolutely right. You know, you're absolutely right. Having them same values and beliefs. So I, I appreciate I thank you for that. <laughs> um, yeah, you mentioned the, the plan and... Um, I was just wondering, since you mentioned that, hey, some in the program have lost lost their lives to gun violence. And I think there's knowing what you want for your future, having the plan. But do you think without an example, 
like you or your program or whoever, even a father figure in some people's lives, they don't know that or they don't believe that that future is possible or they don't put that plan in place because there isn't necessarily the belief or the example in front of them. Of course. And I think for that, you have to take some of these kids out of the environments. And when I say that, when I, when I mean that, you have to take them out of the environment. Some of these kids never been on the plane ride. Some of these kids never been out of South Florida. You have to take them out of their environments. Whether it be trips, sometimes you may have to move them out of their environment to another environment that doesn't have, that doesn't have, that you're not, you know, defined by those, by this street, that avenue, this street. Sometimes it takes that for some young people um, because, you know, no matter what, you're going to have some that go astray, but you have to move them out of their environment sometimes. Again, college trips. Hmm. I never been on a college trip until I took my official visit to go to UM. That was my first time going to a university. I, n- I never been on the plane ride until I started playing AAU basketball when I was in high school. Again, I've never been to Coral Gables unless I was going to Sunset Movie, the- movie Theater with my sister on the Metro Rail. I've never, I've never done some of those things until um, Coach Ice or my basketball coach, or uh, those guys, took me out of, <laughs> took me out of my environment and exposed these things to me. I don't want you living life with regrets, and I think that's the biggest thing to you. You know, I know I veered off a little bit, but to answer your question, you got to take these kids out of the environments, even if you got these mentors. Me telling the kid to stay out of trouble is not just going to cut it. Right. That's not right. going to cut it. Right. Especially if his friend is toting a gun out here shooting a pistol and they're like this. Peer pressure is something, something. Let me get him. Matter of fact, let me get you and your friend and take you out of your environment. Go show you. Come on, let's go to let's go to Georgia. Let's go to Atlanta for a weekend. Let me go show you Georgia Tech. Let's go walk around. Mm-hmm. Let me show you life outside of Overtown out of uh, of Liberty City. And why do you feel like representation matters and that kids are able to see, hey, a successful young black man like like yourself in front of them who who's able to mentor them? Why does that matter? It matters a lot, you know. Represent, representation doesn't matter, you know. I think being a great role model to your children, treating your wife with respect, your kids with respect. You keep, you see, I keep saying family because I think we've gotten away from that. You know, and I think mm-hmm. that's what we need to, you know, to, to get back to, especially in the black community, to to start to uplift the black man. You know, because a lot of women out here trying to do it by themselves, and that's not fair. It's mm-hmm. not fair, you know, to these women out here trying to do it by themselves. We need real men to start getting incorporated back in these families, these lives, these children lives, and step up. You know, and that's it all comes to representation. If I see my father treat my mama right, okay, I'm going to treat my wife right. I'm going to treat my daughter right. I'm going to treat my girlfriend right. I'm going to do those things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do those things, you know? Absolutely. We certainly need more of that. So thank you for what you are doing and um, for really giving back and and continuing on that path. Lastly, I do want to ask you, um, we talked about several different things and just your path um, through sports, your career, your nonprofit. Do you feel like you are, you know, just thinking back to the point you made about losing the will to play football, do you think you are aligned now with purpose and just knowing you are in the right place at the right time with what you're doing? Oh, yeah, uh, of course, you know, of course. I know I still have a couple of projects, you know, on my hand. Um, Because I I, I train train college guys as well. I train some NFL guys, you know, and I always wanted to get a gym because I wanted to incorporate my nonprofit with the gym. You know, you have the gym certain days, that's the certain gym activity going on certain days, and you have the nonprofit going on certain days. You have a place where you can house both. You know, so of, of course, you know, of course I do. I love what I do. I enjoy. I enjoy what I do. And um, yeah, I, I guess I have no, I have no complaints, no doubts, no um, second guess. I enjoy what I do. And I know, you know, 
And I take that back. You know why I know I enjoy what I do? I love what I do. Because I tell myself sometimes, damn, you know, this is really tough. Am I doing the right thing? I ask myself that sometimes. I promise you I do. And that's how I knew I love football. Because I used to ask myself that after them long, hard practices. Man, on Green Tree, them two a day is like, damn, man, I get like, what am I doing? Like, what, what am I doing here? Like, and... And you know you love it if you're questioning it. And I mean, I love it. Even though I come home tired at night, mm -hmm. whatever the situation is, I enjoy what I do. I love what I do. I love the people I run up, I run into. And I, I just love helping people. You know, I, I just I just love helping people. I'm writing this one down. You know you love it if you're questioning it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new one for me, but that one's going to help me. <laughs> Oh, see, listen, Siri. So I'm telling you seriously. You know, you know, you love it if you or you question. I'm serious. You know, it, it, it's it's those days. Even when I teach, I have those days. I want to pull my hair. I'm just like, you know, I'm over this. I'm, I'm over this. But as soon as some kids come back to me, that's Mr. Jackson. Oh, we love you. You're so. And I teach seniors. We love you. This and that. You know, love you guys too. My kids love me, and I'm like, you know, it's it is what it is. You know, it, it is what it is. You. It's hard to show up and be the same person every single day. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we struggle with playing football. We had a motto, be the same man every single day. That's really hard. That's called trying to be a professional. That's really hard. It takes consistency. It takes preparation. It takes focusness. It takes effort. You have to try to master that. And when you can master that, I think you separate yourself from the guys and the guys and the women that want to be good to the guys and the women that want to be you know, great. Oh, mm -hmm. that's, that is great. Awesome. So many good gems. I love it, Demetrius. And <laughs> honestly, <laughs> you love it too. Tell everyone how they can find you, connect with you, website, social media, whatever you want to share. We'll make sure to link to it below. Um, you know, you can find me on Facebook, Demetrius Jackson, um, Instagram coach Jackson 31. Same thing with um, Twitter, type in Demetrius Jackson or Coach Jackson 31. But if you type in Demetrius Jackson on all three platforms, you know, you'll definitely, um, you'll definitely find me. Awesome. And uh, Tamika, I definitely want to thank you, you know, for um, taking the time out your busy schedule. Because I know it's, I know you're busy. It's, it's, it's late. Um, <laughs> just for taking the time out to um, speak with me. Absolutely. Thank you. It was a pleasure. You know, I always got... Hey, love for McCain's. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you go below, find Demetrius's information, connect with him, learn more about men of today, and find out how you can get involved, give back, whether it's with his nonprofit organization, which certainly sounds like they're doing great work, or with another community organization. That is so needed. That is why I love having nonprofits here on this show each and every month. So connect with him. Make sure you also connect with me if you aren't already. I'm all of the places, but I'd especially love it if you connect with me on LinkedIn and hit subscribe on YouTube. Let me know what you think. Leave me a review on Apple Podcasts. I'd especially love that. Let me know what you'd like to hear more of because I have new episodes each and every week and I just hate for you to miss out. So until I see you back next week, because I know I'll see you then, until then, stay happy, stay healthy.